Rough Riders, Riders on the Storm, number one. Written by Adam Glass, art by Pat O'Leaf, with colors by Gabe El Taib. America, 1901. At the World's Fair in Buffalo, New York, the president, I think it's McKinley around this time, gets shot. In the Adirondack Mountains, Vice President Teddy Roosevelt pulls an Android 16 and does some stoic bird watching before he is told that his president has been shot. In New York City, Jack Johnson and Harry Houdini get a message and they run into Monk Eastman. Every time I review a Rough Riders book, I'm fairly certain I need to have a 1900s copy of Who's Who for people. Is Who's Who still a thing? Anyway, so Houdini badasses his way to catching Monk. They then go to the train station where some Doc Ox style arms grab the trio and bring them into a private train car with Thomas Edison. Oh, and Annie Oakley is there too. In Buffalo, New York though, William McKinley passes into the next life with the wild cowboy Teddy Roosevelt now the president. I think I fanboyed pretty hard as both a history buff as well as a comic fan when the first Rough Rider series launched, with me praising Adam Glass's writing and the art and just everything. Since this is basically a season 2, what with the creative team returning, I would strongly recommend checking out the first series, which I'll even link below with the buy now for this. Yeah, spoiler on my verdict. So as a follow-up to the first Rough Riders, if you didn't read that, this isn't going to be confusing like you're just coming in midway through a story. It's actually something hard to do, which is a great launching point to go. Well, if you have no idea about this, check it out and you can then see if you want to check out the past and stick with it into the future. But of course, you at home may go, I don't even know who the hell the Galveston Giant is or why it'd be shocking that Monk Eastman is running a pet shop. Well, welcome to the digital age where you can Google the answers. Yet, it's never a hindrance if you don't understand a referential name or who someone is because these guys are awesome characters outright that you may actually want to watch a documentary or read up on with how well they're written. Jack Johnson is still honestly my favorite character in this series. I realize I rarely get to do a sequel first issues on this show, so I will admit that I'm trying not to just rehash what I said in the Rough Riders first issues. Adam Glass knows how to write characters. He knows how to make Teddy Roosevelt rise to the presidency, have an emotional weight, while still being able to balance that out with ball busting between Jack and Harry. Honestly, if you want to hear me gush about the writing for this, check out my first issues on Rough Riders number one on to see what I mean by that. Okay, if I do have to be fair, there are a couple moments where someone comes in or they see someone and it becomes the group saying that person's name in surprise. You know, when Annie Oakley comes in. Annie Oakley! When they see Monk Eastman. Monk Eastman! But even then, it sort of adds to the fun of the piece more than being a detriment. But I've been flamed before for being too positive on these, so take that for what it is. And yet again, I put the X the emoticon in my script. God, I suck. As for the art team, it's the same from the last, and the art is just more of the awesome that it was in that. Although I noticed, and this could just be that I read this on PDF, so maybe it was a bit brighter there, but the colors do seem brighter, while still keeping a muted look. Actually, what I really enjoyed about this art, and this is going to sound weird to someone who doesn't understand what I mean, I love how the technology feels natural with the art. Even when you get Doc Ock or War of the Worlds inspired mechanical tendrils grabbing people, they feel in place. It may be small to some casual readers, but when you read as many comics as I do on a critical level, a lot of these elements can feel different and they just don't fit together. So when they come out, it's actually a great surprise in story, but it also doesn't feel out of place just flowing well so top marks on art as usual i did spoil my verdict earlier but either way buy this buy this means that it is worth every penny even if i did get a review copy i'm getting a physical copy too because it's that good but i also want to add an asterisk in to say that you really should pick up the first rough rider series and luckily the rough rider trade is out so pick it up as always links to buy digitally are down below and that's all for this episode of First Issues Now. If you agree with me that this was a great read, or if it felt like a rough rider, yes, that's a wrestling joke, leave a comment below. Check out my other channels, Comic Sins, where I count the sins and wins of any given comic, and A Comic A Day, which is just wrapping up Dark Tower Month right now. Like the Archivist Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and pledge to my Patreons for exclusives. Even my goals have some fun nerd stuff to do with my kids, like creating a Power Wheels Batmobile. But as always, stay golden, Inklings.